meeting today with uh, Becky. Becky came from Edmonton uh, with her kids today to chat about chai and we're here, beautiful Bower Ponds in Red Deer. And I have some specific questions that I've always wondered and um, I think I'll just let her take it from the questions. Um, growing up when your mom and I were starting the chai business, I'm curious what it was like from your perspective. For sure. I, so you said a little bit ago, it's been two decades, which is kind of crazy. I didn't realize it was two decades. Because when I was thinking about that, I was like, was I growing up during that time? <laughs> but two decades ago, yes, yeah, I was. Yeah. Um, so I never liked it to begin with. Mm. And mom would always like push it, of course, because she loved it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've really grown to like it. And it You're like my biggest supporter. <laughs> yeah. I need more chai honey. Yeah. Yep. It definitely like is something I use all the time. Something I try to incorporate whenever yeah. I can. Yeah. So yeah. even if the kids are sick or yeah. I give them chai honey or if um, or if we're needing something in our pancakes or something like this, it's always chai spice, right? Yeah. On my coffee or on my tea and mm -hmm. yeah, it's something that's like now just a part of how I operate. Yeah. So I remember whenever mom would be making something in the kitchen, she would always, she had everything very organized, of course, yeah. in her little Tupperware containers. And she would have everybody, say a friend would come over, it would be kind of embarrassing, but you know, that's what your mom does. And she would be like, oh, smell this spice, and smell this, oh, and smell this. And she would be very creative in the kitchen as well with that. And I remember when I moved away to school, for cooking she when I would come back she would the first thing she'd want to make me a tea and make me a chai and sit down and talk and what else can I make you and always just like that provider mm -hmm. that she was so like when I have a chai that's kind of the same thing mm -hmm. right always trying to take care of it mm -hmm. um, and I didn't really realize how young I was when she started because I feel like I was always older and less interested in it but then um, there came a time where I was interested and it was delicious and it was nice mom was really happy always doing any of the chai business and always talking to customers and adding it to chocolate almond milk and <laughs> she was always creating making something making menus of different Mexican dishes or different, adding different spices together and seeing what she could create. And I remember, it wasn't always good, of course, as it happens when you're creating. One time we made salsa and she thought, oh, I'll just put like three or four limes in and she Vitamixed them and completely, we destroyed that salsa. We did not make nice salsa. So that had to be thrown in the garbage, but that's part of creating is starting again and trying, always trying different combinations. So this might be a hard question for you, yeah. but um, how do you feel watching the chai business grow now that you don't have your mom? I feel super proud of it, yeah. It's crazy because <clears throat> two decades is a long time and it's really, Grown, like grown quite a bit from little farmers markets mm -hmm. to in stores and people using it as their staple chai so that's really awesome to see and it just it like allows mom to still be around it's so nice. absolutely it does <laughs> yeah yeah for sure yeah, yeah. yeah. makes me like it's really like a tender, super special thing to see and to be part of. Your mom and I did a lot of different things together and I've always sort of wondered what it looked like from your side. And one thing I was thinking about was the beautiful wall mosaic that we did at the front of the house. What were you thinking when you were a teenager at that time? 
Yeah, so I guess I was about like 18 when the wall mural was going up. So it was like a long um, thought out process for mom. She would collect plates and bowls that had little chips out of them and think of any way to use them because it was that was just what she would do. So um, it was, I know it took her like a lot of planning and you were part of that too. And that was cool to see how instead of taking it from like a big piece, it was broken down into 32 squares. And that was really cool because, you know, you can work on one out of 32 in an evening instead of taking it and doing the whole thing. So little piece by little piece was like, that's how it, it's, that's the best way to do it. So that was a cool process to see and incorporating all of her Emile Henry in there and um, in a tasteful way. Cause I know a lot of the times um, like we would go camping and there would be these antique stores and there was this one woman who was like oh come into my mosaic office and she had made this like these pieces that were from sea glass from miners or something and it was not nice it didn't look nice <laughs> it was like you put all this effort into it and she was proud of it but you couldn't market that or it wasn't nice to look at but it's so beautiful to look at the mural and Everybody who drives by, like people will stop and still take pictures of it and be so amazed by it. And just look like, just to be part of that is cool. Like, oh, you're the house with the mural. And I know when we moved there, it was ugly brick painted over and mom hated that. Like, I think we still have a picture of the old house and what it looked like and now what it's transformed to. And even furthermore, she put like, a beautiful garden, a beautiful front step. So she really like took something that she didn't like about the house and made it all the better. So that was like really cool <clears throat> as a person who now has a home and is thinking about different renovations and different pieces and making it my own. It's cool to see like how mom made it and it's still doing well today. The garden is still flourishing, even though my dad doesn't do very much with it. <laughs> but it still looks great and she even did a mosaic um a mosaic a bowling ball oh, right. so she got some old bowling balls from the old plaza bowling yeah. and mosaic that and that was like a nice little accent piece and the flowers and everything she just really pulled it all together mm -hmm. so yeah. it makes like a really nice thing to come back to and to see that she's still there yeah. Yesterday, I had a very heartfelt conversation with Heather's daughter, Becky, and I was so appreciative of her memories of Chai. It's an exciting day today. It's a beautiful morning in Red Deer, Alberta. It's a really exciting time for the Chai Wallas. We have moved into a new shop. We've, uh, when I say we, I have a partner in my shop uh, that grows microgreens. And so she's helping me put the signage up today. And she's as excited as I am to have a place to grow her greens. I'm here putting my tea together and it's a real dream come true.
So now I have this physical space that I can make plans to utilize in a way that will help us grow. We can have classes here on making chai. What is chai? People can actually smell and taste and really enjoy um, small groups talking about the history of chai. Uh, we can, um, we are Alberta Health certified in this space now. Uh, so there's room for growth there as well. Mixing, um, storing all the spices. It's so amazing to think about being organized. Um, when I was working out of a garage and cupboards in my kitchen and my neighbor's garage, uh, you feel disjointed. And this feels like we are put together. We are an official business when you have a shop like this. So Heather and I started out, and I think not as a money-making venture. We wanted to spend time together. Uh, we found this glorious product in chai that we both felt as passionate about. And we talked in our conversations when we were mi mixing our tea about having a tea shop you know maybe we would actually serve tea from somewhere um, and we went back and forth in different kinds of business plans uh, for us owning a place where we could function was a really big part of the plan now that that day is here i now get to start thinking about what does that mean? What does that look like? Coming on our May of next year, 2023, is our uh, two, our 20-year um, anniversary. Seems like such a long time. And I want to commemorate those things with Heather's passing. Um, I have some bags that I would like to imprint with some images of her. I think that people would really love to see that being brought back into the business, honoring one of the founders. Um, and I think growing to be a place where people, um, customers can come and actually do a tea tasting. I think that um, that's something that could be uh, very close in the works. Um, I think having an actual wall of photos that people can look at because 20 years is a long time. Uh, our packaging has changed through that time. We probably have three or four different types of packaging for the tea. Um, and I think that that will help other entrepreneurs, food industry people, um, see that it's not an over the night, overnight that you create a business like this, that there's slow growth um, and that you can be proud of each step that you go through. My shop partner, Lindsay, from I Love Mon Microgreens, is a lovely young Métis woman. And I thought moving into this space, it would be important to her um, and to me to have a blessing for our space and moving forward. Um, so today we were, um, being together, uh, uh, Mukesh, the filmmaker, uh, was able to bring his um, one of the Indian traditions and 
uh, he did a blessing for us this morning. And then um, Lindsay also brought her sage to uh, bless the space. Uh, so that feels cleansing and uh, really honoring. I've learned a lot from working with the filmmaker. Uh, Mukesh has um, brought some insight into things that I didn't know much about. And one of the fun things that happened the other day was when I was with Holly and we were in that nice little uh, enclosed area, area at Carrywood Nature Center, we were talking about Heather and what she brought to our life and it was really timely when I was embracing Holly at the end and saying thank you very much for her kind words. I had a, a large bug uh, come onto my arm. And uh, it was startling actually because it was something I hadn't seen before. And I've since found out it's called a uh, stone fly. Um, and Mukesh was telling me that in his culture, when something like that happens, it is somebody from beyond trying to be present in your life. And I think that is absolutely how Heather would be feeling from beyond, that she just wanted to make her presence known to us. Moving into this new space has me thinking about the growth that's happened in the business. And part of the growth that um, we've had is because of a food grant that we got in 2017. And that enabled us to uh, be able to produce our product, our chai honey actually, in the food processing plant. So we were given a scientist to work with, to work through um, pres uh, making sure it's preserved properly. We were given uh, people to help us with a nutrition table, with labeling. Uh, we did a run of each one of our products and we had to only pay half of what we would normally have paid for those runs. Uh, so that was so helpful in our growth process. Um, in the plant, it's, we hire all women to, um, to actually do all the work. We bring in two huge um, rain barrel sized um, honey and heat that up and get it into the big vats where all of the chai spice gets stirred in. Um, it's a really amazing place because everything that's in your kitchen is then made on this gigantic level. All the mixers that you would get are huge and all stainless steel. It's quite another world to be in a food processing plant. Uh, we were, um, Heather was actually alive when we went in and started working with the scientists and like we could just grin and we were pretty happy about where we were. About six months ago, I was offered a, um, a spot in a program called Be Awesome. It's a program supported by the government out of the Saskatchewan Food Center. It's, um, it sounds like it isn't um, a really interesting program from the outside. When you get on the inside, it's so rich and it feeds your food industry experience. Um, we were 14 
women um, in everything from salsa making to mead to grinding flour. And we learned a lot, mostly about packaging, labeling, um, even how to transport things. And it was, uh, it filled our knowledge base so that we could um, move ahead a lot quicker when we had all of that knowledge. So the final week with the Be Awesome program, we were gifted a uh, film crew that got to come to our space and created a two minute video. We had to do um, a, a computer copy of a sell sheet and we had to send them some of our product to taste. And there was a panel that spent time with our product, tasting and watching the video. And then we were able to um, talk with them one on one. And at the end of it, it was like a dragon's den and they graded our performance and our written material and there were prizes and the Chai Wallas ended up winning third prize and we were able to uh, get a grant for um, some marketing. Uh, so uh, I was super proud of everyone in the program. We had such growth um, but uh, it was really nice to have that third place on our uh, logo.